Another form of a quadratic function is when it's in intercept form. So that looks like this, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. And the p and the q, they're just numbers, any old numbers we want them to be. Now, uh, let's take a look at what the a, the p, and the q do on Sketchpad here. So I've got my regular parent function graphed, the y equals x squared. And the purple one is the one that's in intercept form. So when I make a bigger, you can see just like before, makes my parabola skinnier. When I make it closer to zero, it makes it better. And if I make it negative, it flips over the x-axis. And there's your bird again. Okay. So now let's change p. Let's move p to the right. Now look at this. I've got p at, let's say, 4. If I look at my parabola at 4, that's where the x-intercept is. Right now my q's at 0. That's the other x-intercept. Let me make my q maybe something over here, maybe something like negative 2. And then again, you can see that whatever those values are, that's where the x-intercepts are. That's why it's called intercept form. Okay, so now take a look at this quadratic equation. It has two x-intercepts, one's at 4 and one's at negative 2. How many different par uh, parabolas can you have for that? Well, let me move this a. So when I move the a, making this wider or skinnier or flipping this around, you can see you can have tons and tons and infinite number of parabolas through those two points. Okay, now let's say that I wanted to find where the vertex is. So I'm not given the vertex directly on this, but it's pretty easy to get. So think of the segment that connects these two x-intercepts. Since this parabola is symmetric, if we were to find the midpoint right here, between those two, that's where the axis of symmetry would be. And that's where the vertex's x-coordinate would be. So in order to get that, you just add up these two coordinates, the 4 plus negative 2 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. I get my x-coordinate. So let's go back to the slideshow here. So in intercept form, this is y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. The a just makes it fatter or skinnier. The p and the q are the two x-intercepts. And in order to get the vertex here, I take the average of these two. I add up the x and uh, the x-intercepts, the p and the q, divided by 2. And that gives me the equation of the axis of symmetry. That's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. In order to find the y-coordinate, I just stick it back in. How would I find the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is just where x is equal to 0. So you just plug 0 in for each of these, and you can see that it would just be simply a times negative p times negative q. And that would be the y-intercept. Once you got that, you could just reflect that over. So if I wanted to graph one of these in intercept form, first thing that I want to do is First thing I wanted to do is look at the A value. A value is going to determine whether we've got ourselves a beard, and that's when the A is positive, or a mustache when it's negative. Plot these x-intercepts, the P and the Q. And just remember, if this was something like y equals uh, 2 times x minus 7 times x plus 5, your x-intercepts are really positive 7 and negative 5. You'd have to change the signs of both of those. And the reason why is if I were to set this equal to 0, x plus or x minus 7 equals 0, I'd have to add that 7 over and I'd get x equals 7. To find the vertex, you just average your x, your, your two x-intercepts, divide by 2, plug it back in to get the y-coordinate, and then maybe graph something like the y-intercept and reflect it over. 